Hello, all. my name is Moshe Shuraisham and I'm on the chair of Calgary Targeted Neonatal Echo Program. Today we will be looking at the ultrasound assessment of umbilicus venous catheter position. The learning objective of this presentation include to understand the normal anatomy and the course of umbilical vein, to examine the role of ultrasound for evaluation of umbilical venous catheter position, and to learn what are the views to assess UBC position by ultrasounds. So just looking at the nobesic anatomy of umbilical vein, so there are single one uh, umbilical vein, we usually go uh, superficially from umbilicus more towards the head and there is a little dilatation just before reaching the junction of the portal vein that is called umbilical recess and this is the first point where we find a difficulty or resistance while inserting UBC. From there it goes posteriorly and through the ductus venosus and joins the inferior vena cava and that's the side where most of the hepatic veins also join. From inferior vena cava, it goes a sense superiorly towards the junctions of right atrium and inferior vena cava junction. So this is the simple venogram of uh, to the umbilical vein. So this is the umbilical vein going up. This is the umbilical recess. Then that's where it joins to the left portal vein. From there, it goes since posteriorly through the ductus venosus and joins the inferior vena cava and then towards the right atrium. So traditionally, and still now, x-rays are the most common method to evaluate the position of umbilical catheters. So the ideal location for umbilical catheter tip to minimize any form of complications, either cardiac complication or hepatic complication, is to place the catheter tip just outside the heart uh, at the junction of inferior vena cava and the right atrium. On x-rays, depending on the studies, it might vary somewhere between eight thoracic vertebral to about 10 thoracic vertebra and this has to be just above the right diaphragm but below the cardiac cell hout. The first time the umbilical venous catheter tip was uh, uh, compared with the x-ray was back in 1995 by Grinberg et al. and they have looked at number of UVCs which was located at various uh, thoracic vertebral level and one thing we can see is that uh, somewhere around nine thoracic vertebrae if they were there but imagine in a small baby maybe about millimeter or two millimeter about 100 percent of them were in correct position but there are only 17 babies and in between T8 and T9 about 90 percent were correctly positioned at right atrial to IVC junction and by T10, there are only one out of three were in the correct position. All umbilical venous catheter tip is just at T11 and below, they were all in the liver proximal to the ductus venosus. So it's, people consider anywhere between T8 to about T10 is what is considered acceptable based on this in the earlier studies. Recently, we also looked at how accurate is this x-ray for umbilical venous catheter tip localization. Just looking at it, the more and more studies are coming that it's not much reliable uh, catheter tip position based on the x-ray. Even in our study, when we look at 65 preterm infants below 32 weeker, the optimum catheter tip position defined is uh, UBC tip at the junction of right atrium to inferior vena cava, they had <coughs> uh, varied from T6 thoracic vertebra to T10-11 interspace on x-ray. Only about less than half of babies, uh, that's about 44% of catheter tips, which was located between T9 to T10 on the x-ray, were on optimum position. Similarly, if you really look at between T8 to T9, there is as many uh, 
a good or ideal location to uh, lots of uh, many babies who are in the right atrium, interatrial septum or left atrium. So overall, if you combine the two, the, the, the success or the optimum positioning based on the x-ray is not uh, very reliable when looking at the ultrasound. So therefore, ultrasound has become a, a emerging modality to assess umbilical venous catheter teeth. In order to do this ultrasound, we need to do a standard views. Uh, for example, we want to see a subcostal view, and second is a parasternal sore axis view. Uh, and sometimes we can also look at for a deeper position by apical four chamber view. And sometimes, if it's not working, we might have to use modified view from the traditional parasternal sore axis. So let's look at subcostal view as the first entrance. So for in order to do, just to recapitulate, subcostal view, we put the probe at the subcostal area just below the zipoid process with the probe marker facing at 12 o'clock position. And first thing what we will notice is that you will see a liver on the right side and the heart, that's the entrance to the right atrium on the left side. So if you see it in this picture, so this is the liver, and that is the right atrium. And the structure which is coming is, is the UVC. So this is the inferior vena cava, right atrium. So we want to keep the catheter somewhere at the in the IVC up to as close to the IVC RA junction. Once we see that catheter tip is going into the uh, right atrium, we need to know how far the catheter is. Is it just at the right atrial IVC junction or is it further going towards the interatrial septum or to the left atrium? Sometimes that may not be seen only from the subcostal view. Therefore, we need to do a, what is it called, parasternal short axis view. In order to perform a parasternal short axis view, we place the probe at the lower one third of sternum with the transducer marking pointing towards the left shoulder. In this view, you will see uh, aortic valve at the center, left atrium, posterior to it, and right atrium on the right side. So in this view, if you can see that this is the parasternal short axis with this is the aorta, left atrium, this is the right atrium, and you can see the catheter tip coming from the IVC to the right atrium and almost crossing the patent foramen ovale to the left atrium. So, therefore, it's important to note how far they are going, and this is also important if you need to measure how much distance to pull it back if they were in a deeper position. Apical four chamber view is another position which is often used to see whether catheter tip is crossing the patent foramen oval. In order to perform this, we put the transducer at the four and fifth intercostal space at the apical apex of the heart in the mid clavicular line. From there, you can see the four chamber view, and what we are focusing is between the left uh, right atrium and left atrium. In this view, you can see there is a catheter crossing the interatrial septum towards the left atrium. So let's look at examples. So this is a 26 weeker who had respiratory distress syndrome and umbilical venous catheter were inserted. Just by looking at it, the baby's catheter tip is located between T9 and T10 vertebra. We might say maybe this is a good position, or some might say it is just very well outside the cardiac margin, might wonder should we push further or not. So before we did this, we looked at, uh, before we manipulate, we did a, a bedside ultrasound, and what we see is that you can see the catheter tip coming to the IBC, to the right atrium here, and somewhere it's crossing towards the uh, interatrial septum. So. Even at T9 and T10, we are seeing catheter tips deep inside the heart, which needs to be pulled back. In the second case is a 24-weeker, 565-gram 
a female child who had severe respiratory stress was intubated with endotracheal tube here and uh, therefore he has the UAC and UVC inserted. For the UVC, as for the UAC, it's dipping down towards the pelvic through the internal ilia and going up and is probably located around, uh, so this is 12, so 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, around T7 for umbilical artery line and for UVC, it's at T10. So similarly, we perform uh, bedside ultrasound. This is the parastinal, so, uh, so this is the subcostal view. This is the liver. This is the heart here. And you can see one structure coming very close to the junction of IBC and the RA. So as we suggested, do not stop in one view. So we proceeded with the second view, which is the parastinal. Uh, short axis, surprisingly, we could see this catheter is also going so far deep in the right at, uh, left atrium. So even at T10, some are still at left atrium. Third case, this is a 30 weaker 1294 gram male child who had umbilical catheter inserted because of difficult peripheral IV access. And in this film, you will see it's somewhere between 12, 11, 10, 9, between 8 and 9. We would say, yeah, that's really good. It's just above the diaphragm, just at the uh, cardiac uh, chill out. We also perform the x-ray. And in this particular, they were just coming to the junction of the IVC and RA. We also did epical four chamber, just trying to see is there anything structure lying inside and you don't see any structure sitting there. So for this case, definitely bigger baby, the, the catheter was in a very optimum position. So to conclude, chest X-ray is not very reliable for accurate assessment of umbilical venous catheter position. In the cases where ultrasound is not readily available or accessible, placement of catheter tip Somewhere uh, between around T9, upper border of T9 vertebra to about T10 may be suggested. But the best is if you have access to the point of care ultrasound and skill to do, this is the best way to access catheter tip. Said and then once it's trained, it might take about a few minutes, maybe about on an average two to three minutes is all you need to get access to the uh, umbilical catheter position by ultrasound. Thank you.